We're going to talk in this segment about how you get this thing onto your foot. And believe me, this is worth 100 points, really. It's really not in tournaments, but it ought to be because the first time you try to do this, it feels incredibly awkward. So my advice to you is don't even try it the first time on the water. Do it on dry land a few times. Get a sense of what's got to happen mechanically between this and your foot. It'll be a lot easier to do it on the water. My first time, I tried to do it on the water, and it was just fall after fall after fall as I just screwed around trying to figure out how to get this thing on. So you want the, the bear trap of this neoprene part here is flared in a certain direction. It's narrow on this side, as you can see, and it's more open on this side. I've seen a lot of people do it the wrong way. It doesn't work. So you want to grab the rope. You're going to be in a skiing position like this. You're going to pull, in, pull the rope in, and you're going to grab here. You're going to grab just in front of the floats on the rope. You can see where I'm grabbing. I'm talking about this hand here. All right, I'm a, I'm a left foot forward skier, which means the rope goes on my right foot. Sean's going to demonstrate this. He's the opposite, right? Um, it doesn't matter. It's really the same technique. Once you've got it, all right, it's possible to slide your hand back up, kind of force this thing open. That's not a bad thing to do because as you come out of the water, the bear trap wants to close out. And once it's closed up, it's really hard to drive your foot up through it, all right? So grab it. You're skiing now, remember, when you're doing this. So now you got to get used to skiing in this position with your hands not on a solid handle here. That takes some, some practice, believe me. Once you get it there, you can lift your foot up, right? Bring the handle down, all right? And slide your toes in, grab the handle like this, and pull it back onto your foot, all right? Once you get to that point in time, all right? Remember, you got a pin man who's going to release you, so don't worry about it. You can grab the heel strap and put it behind, okay? This might take a few tries to get there, but once you're there, you should be able to ski pretty stably with your thigh horizontal, the thigh bone horizontal. You don't want to be down here, okay? And too high has a tendency to force you to straighten out your leg as well. So there's a lot of knee and ankle bend involved here. You can see it in this. And there's a lot of bend in the hip horizontal here, so there's a 90 degree here, and there's a 90 degree between the knee. My ankle, main thing is not to point it out like this, 90 degree there again. So that's the position that you want to get in. Most dangerous thing to do when you're in this is look down. As soon as you look down, hips go forward, it's a fall. Chris demonstrated one way to get the, uh, the toe hold on your foot. I'm going to demonstrate a different way, and people do this a slew of different ways, so you may have your own way as well. So, and, and, and this may, I may do it this way because it's fast and I'm really used to it, and Chris's way is probably the best way to learn initially. But so, when I'm skiing along, um, I will simply bring my foot all the way up, and I'll jam it in there like this. I'll hold it with one, just hold the handle with one hand and come and put the uh, strap on the back and then release into uh, position. So that's a different technique you can try. Okay, break. Okay. hands are really important. Your hands are used to balance you. You don't want them up here, you don't want them sear. Um, I actually learned a trick a lot of times with my hands almost right next to me. That was wrong. 
So don't do that. You want them out by your sides at about waist height, maybe a little bit lower, okay? Don't push them down enough so that you're doing this. That'll be a fall. Keep your eyes up, get stable, and use your hands to balance you as everything in your body is changing and reacting to the water. You'll be a lot easier that way. So, skiing in the toe hold, when you start out, it's going to feel really unstable. It takes a lot of development of muscle in any athlete to learn how to do this, to stand on one foot on a fairly slippery ski with a pull that's coming from an area of your body that you're absolutely not used to. Most of us are used to a pull coming from our shoulders. The pull here, center of pull here comes from your hips. It's actually a very stable pull because you don't have this long lever arm of your torso working against you. But it still takes a lot of strength and then the strength is here. You can see my left leg is starting to shake and I ski a lot of sets every week. So you're going to spend a lot of time just riding in this position and then once you're comfortable start riding across the wake if you're a left foot forward skier like I am, it's easier to go to, the, go to the right side of the wake and go off that way. If you're a right foot skier, it's going to be easier to go this way. Get good at doing both. You want to be able to cross in and out of the wake very comfortably without losing your position and none of this kind of stuff. No sudden flinches or saves, that kind of thing. Once you're comfortable with that, then you can actually start the next thing, which is learning how to do a back. It's the simplest trick and actually it's not as difficult to do as it seems. We'll take a break there.